How did Jesus pray right before he was taken for his death? That's what we're going to find out today in John 17. So we are still in the upper room, and Jesus lifts up his eyes to heaven and says, Hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ who you've sent, calling himself his own name right then and there, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I've had with you before the world existed. We started, John, with the beginning of the world, the light and the word. And he's saying, you know what? Glorify me just like I had ever since time began, the world began. Nice way to tie everything up into that message that we understand Jesus has been here from the beginning and that he won eternal life for everybody who believes in him. This whole thing is a prayer. The whole chapter of the red letter, as most of these chapters have been, it's mostly Jesus speaking with a few uh, mutterings here and there from the apostles. And so he says, I manifested your name to your people whom you gave me out of the world. Like I said, I don't want to read the whole thing because I want you to read along with it. They know everything that you've given me for them to know. I have given it all to them. I've told all the words you told me to say so that they can believe in the person that you sent, which is me. I'm praying for them all, but I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you've given to me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and I'm coming for you. I'm coming home, you know, God the Father, Holy Father, keep them in your name. You know, I always think of keeping them as, again, like the chicken, you know, like huddling up the chicks under her wing. Keep them. You've given to me that we may be one, even as we are one. When Jesus was here, he kept us in his name. He has guarded them. It says that none of them have been lost except the son of destruction, which I believe in a lot of the commentaries all believed is Judas Iscariot. He's the one that left lacking faith. He was given and he walked out. He walked away from the whole thing. So the disciples really should know and, th- and this would have meant something for the disciples because they know who was the one that was lost. And Jesus is saying, I'm coming to you. I speak these words into the world so they may have joy fulfilled in them. He's given the word. The word has hated them for it because they're not of this world anymore. I mean, we've heard that. We're not of this world. He's not of this world. We're not of this world. We should take this message for ourselves. Jesus doesn't ask for us to be taken out of the world. I mean, I think that that's sometimes a a thought that people have. Wouldn't it be just better if I was in heaven with God? Why am I even here? They don't listen to me. No one pays attention to me. And Jesus says that he is keeping us in the world. We are meant to be in this world. But that he is asking God the Father, keep us from the evil one, the devil. Sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. Who's the word? Jesus is the word. And we learned at the beginning, Jesus was the word. You sent me to this world and I've sent them out. I'm sending them out to the world. So for their sake, I consecrate myself. The word consecrate means hallowed, keeping yourself holy so that they also may be sanctified. There's another word that we don't talk about very often. What does the word sanctified mean? Well, it means the same word as consecrate, to keep holy, to keep purified, to keep clean. So he's saying, I consecrated myself so they may be sanctified in truth, cleansed, purified, keeping themselves holy in truth. And he says, I do not ask those things only, but also for those who will believe me through their words, that they all may be one, just as the Father are in me and I am with you and they are with us. So he is saying, all those who believe through their word. So it's not just the apostles. I think this is the first time Jesus mentioned us. I mean, we are implied in the words of Jesus all the time, but now he's specifically saying it for all those who will believe in me through their words that they may be one 
just as you, Father, and are in me, and I am in you, that they also will be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I don't know. I don't know why, but when I read that in studying for this, it kind of like gave me chills a little bit. <laughs> the glory that you have given me, I'm giving to them, so they may be one, even as we're one. <laughs> And I and them and you and me so that we can be perfectly one so that the world may know that you have sent me and loved them even even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am and see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, Even though the world does not know you, I know you. And these know that you have sent me. And I have made known to them your name. And I will continue to make them known that I love with which you have loved me and may be in them and I in them. Okay, I'm a terrible reader out loud and I'm sorry for that. But this is the prayer that God is praying for us about what happens next. Oh, goodness. I'm going to meditate and I will never probably be able to sleep again. I mean, isn't this something that he is praying for us and he's praying for our protection? He is praying so that we may believe, that we may be loved, that we may be kept from the evil one, that we can go and bring others with us and share who God the Father and who Jesus is because we are going to be sent just like the apostles were sent. That's how. This all continues today in this church. Every time I think that God prays for us and prays for his apostles, we have to take that so seriously because we really see his heart at, that, at this moment of what he really thinks of us, what he thinks of God the Father, and what our connection together is, that we are this entire body of Christ, body of the Father together. Wow. Okay, well, um, what I'm going to meditate on is the fact that God called us out in this chapter so that we may take the words that were given by these apostles and then share them with the world, share them with other people, be strong, be kept from the evil one, be in love with each other, and be in a loving relationship with God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit, and with each other. This is the establishment of what's now here on earth. What I'm going to pray about is I'm strong enough to do these things that God has prayed on our behalf, that I can take this mission on. And what I'm going to share with others is that God spoke of us, is that Jesus spoke of us in his prayer to God the Father right before he lost his life and returned to the Father where he's preparing a place. Woo! So that ends the time in the upper room. (laughs) Thank you all so much for listening. I appreciate you being here. Again, if you have anything you want to say, please remember you can email me at jill at smallstuffswithgod.com. And boy, I am going to be spending a lot of time thinking about all this. (laughs) Have a really wonderful day.